Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Advice from a Call Center Geek, the Call Center Contact Center podcast. We try to give you some actionable items to take back in your contact center, improve the overall quality, improve your agent experience, hopefully improve your customer experience as well. My name is Tom Laird. I am the CEO here at Expedia Interaction Marketing. Expedia is a 600-seat hybrid contact center outsourcer located here in the States, uh, in Erie, Pennsylvania. How's everybody doing? It's good to talk to everybody starting to become like fall like here in in northwestern pennsylvania it's my my favorite time of year football's back i'm fired up it's a friday every i don't know maybe once a year i i i do this this podcast um and kind of just update it i think it's really informative and and it's fun for me cuz we experiment a lot with this so it's it's kind of cool stuff i think hopefully i can i can bring to you and and talking about speech analytics and I know it's a hot topic in the industry. There's a lot of, I guess, work being done on on, on real time translation and an agent assist and all those things. But I want to, you know, not really use it or, or really talk about it in the scheme of of what companies are using with analytics. But you know, what what we as an organization or or a contact center, you know, can use from the kind of the raw data that speech analytics can can offer you from from customer journey and you know, the word clouds and kind of that, that core product of analytics, right? You know, a lot of us just kind of look at a dashboard. We see some keywords and say, wow, that's really cool. And and maybe get some insights, but I want to give you kind of 10 unique use cases on how we have used analytics in the past, how we're using it right now. You know, we try to maximize for our clients, the, the use cases that we can do for analytics. And it's such a cool tool that we can really kind of think things through and, and do some, some, I think, really, really interesting things with it. So let me start with this. So again, this is kind of 10 unique use cases for, for speech analytics. Some of them, I think you'll kind of get it. Um, other ones could be a little bit kind of different in, in something hopefully that, that can spark your guys, uh, spark your mind. So again, I do have comments on this is, this is live on LinkedIn as well. So um, if anybody, hi, Sonia, how you guys doing? David, what's up, buddy? Um, if any of you guys have a comment, have a question, you know, I'll try to, as I go through this, try to answer those as well. So number one, and I think is, is something that we can all relate to speech analytics and that's, that's proactive customer support, right? So many of us are in the, you know, we're in contact centers. We answer problems as they come in. So many times we will have, uh, you know, higher ups or for us, we're VP will have a client be like, hey, what are you hearing? Right. And then we'll try to talk to agents and and, and maybe they'll, they'll tally some things or we'll look at dispositions and say, hey, this is kind of what we're kind of hearing. It's not it's pretty subjective. Right. And it doesn't allow for a lot of proactive customer support. But when we're using analytics, you know, one of the big things that we're using is to be able to tell clients before things start to happen, when we start to hear rumblings, right? Because all of those keywords, all that big data is being analyzed, right? So we can start to listen and hear, right? That customers are starting to say a product is too expensive. Um, shipping is being delayed. Hey, there's an issue on the website, right? Um, where where maybe one or two reps might not be able to put that piece together, but when every single call is being looked at and every single call is being translated and we're doing a, a lot of you know data analysis on that or the system is doing it, you can start to see that right in front of your eyes. So you can send that email out to customers before things happen, right? Uh, maybe they're not going to have an issue, but you know they're in a, a client segment that could have an issue in a week. To, to try to start to fix some of these things before you have the, the fire that you have to put out. So it's one of the main reasons I love analytics. That's for, from doing the, the, the proactive kind of customer support, I think is really cool. Number two is something that you guys have heard me talk a lot about. I get probably more questions on this than any other thing. And that is rewarding and incenting your agents off of sentiment, right? We reward agents off of great CSAT, a lot of you guys reward people off of great NPS, right? I think sentiment scoring is even more important than those. We won't get into that. I have 42,000 podcasts and in, in, in talks that I've done on that and why I think sentiment score is more important or is a better metric than, than NPS and CSAT. But to be able to pull a report and, and almost rank your associates 
not just on their QA scores, but rank them on their tone, on their word usage, right? How, how customers are really relating to them. And it's not just on, you know, 5% of their calls or 2% of their calls. It's on every call that they took, right? So you get the real picture, right, of, of where agents are, what their tone is. Are they treating customers appropriately, right? So this is kind of the, the one, the big piece of our, of our attitude and effort. So this is really the, 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 that, that core attitude piece. Now we're able to really incentivize and pay our reps and show them and, and even show our clients now that we are talking to your customers the proper way. And if we have somebody that's kind of out of the out of the norm, then they're going to get some extra QA, extra extra monitoring, extra coaching, but an awesome way to incentivize your associates um, off of a real KPI um, that they can't really argue, right? The third kind of unique use case, and, and maybe this isn't as unique, right, is, is generating marketing data, right? You know, when we talk about, again, I, I know I just, I love the use case of saying that the too expensive, that was such a huge use case for us when you know, we did have a retail client, they did launch a new project or new product. And, you know, they, they were very concerned about price point. And, and we did have a huge amount of customers that called back um, on that product and said, Hey, we like it, but I can't buy it. 38, it was 38%. I'll never forget. It was 38% of the customers that said the product was too expensive when, when, when we had inbound customer support, we were asking questions, talking to customers. So there's so much, much information that your customers are telling you that you don't know about, right? It is, it is more fun. And analytics is such a better tool when you find out the things you don't know about, right? We can always track the things that we want to track, right? Certain keywords, um, certain certain issues that we think we know are, could be a, a problem. But when you find out the things that you had no idea about and, and, and the analytics can kind of dig and, and kind of open that onion, you know, that's when you can really improve your customer experience, your customer support, you know, a huge piece of, of, of what analytics really can do. Right. And I think that, you know, the fourth one is, is really finding out the whys, right? So, you know, we always look at agent sentiment, but then we also almost more importantly, especially for our clients and our BPO clients is, is looking at customer sentiment, right? So, you know, we, we can talk about, again, CSAT and NPS, but the cool thing about looking at, you know, where a, a, a customer segment is at. So let's just say, again, for an example, we see 50% of the customers that call let's say us when we're doing this heavy, their tone is negative, right? So they're, they're ticked off when they're before they even talk to the agent. And the great thing about analytics is a lot of times, you know, we don't know why that is, but with analytics, we can find out the whys, right? So finding out the whys is a huge piece of this, right? So looking at and talking to a customer, all right, Hey, you know, customer X, Y, Z, company XYZ, 50% of your customers are, are are calling in our negative, right? We want to move that thing to, you know, or I guess we can move it back down this way. We want to move that down to to, to 40% of, of, of the, the customer base. So if we can move it down to 40%, you know, that's a, that's a huge jump. How do we do that? We are then looking at those, those keywords, right? And we can, turn that and, and kind of view them by, by a negative sentiment, right? So what are the negative keywords that customers are using? And a lot of times, you know, what we'll see it has nothing to do with the agent. It has to do with the website. It has to do with logistics. It has, has to do with, with emails not being responded to. You know, a lot of different <clears throat> things that, that happen in the whole customer journey. So again, finding the whys out, <clears throat> awesome use case for analytics. One of the other things in, in the, the fifth kind of reason is we can note frustration for certain specific things. So a lot of times you will have customers call in that are that, that you you handle fine. They seem really happy the entire time. You know, they understand that there was an issue. You're handling that issue. But they'll bring up a, a side issue that they're frustrated about. So, again, talking about a retail client. You know, they could be like, you know, let's say they're calling for the refrigerator and there's a piece that, 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 that they ordered that's been delayed. So they call in and say, hey, you know, I, I got this. You guys were supposed to send me this piece for my refrigerator, fix it, you know, yesterday. It wasn't overnighted. 
our agent can be like, oh my gosh, ma'am, I'm so sorry. You know, I can, I'm going to you know make sure that that gets done right now. And, and the customer's fine. And, and, you know, we can say, hey, is, is there anything, is there anything else I can help you with? She's like, no, but you know, she's like, I just wish the light was brighter in the freezer. Like, like that thing is so dark. Right. But, but other than that, no, you know what? I'm fine. Right. And again, this is probably a terrible example, but I think you get the point. Right. So that, that call was viewed as a positive sentiment, right? We helped the customer. The customer wasn't really ticked, right? They like our brand, but there was a piece of frustration in there that, you know, that maybe they didn't really deal with, right? Or, 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 or we would have never caught or really talked about, but we can now with analytics, we can note frustration, right? So we can start to look at, is there little frustrating things? And a lot of those times are the things that are boiling underneath the, the surface that become the next negative sentiment type thing. So again, noting frustration, I think is a, is a really cool and relatively newer um, use case and, and, and also option for, for a lot of analytics platforms. All right, number six, and you guys have, I just kind of did a big video on this and the feedback on this is always really cool. And that's why I kind of probably do it because I, I do get a lot of feedback on it and, and we have some really cool conversations, but, you know, understanding what, what real SLA variance for a customer base should be or could be, right? So again, for our use case as a BPO, we have a lot of clients that say, hey, listen, I want top-notch service, but again, my budget cannot afford to be staffed at an 80-30, right? 80% of the calls answer within 30 seconds or less. What can we do, Tom? Well, what we can do is, is start taking calls and we can benchmark and look at analytics and we can start to see at what time period does positive customer sentiment start to turn to negative customer sentiment, right? And again, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because I just did really like a whole video and, and things on this. But we a lot of times we'll see that certain customer base, and maybe it's because of what has happened before where there's been extremely long wait times, are now trained and programmed, right, right, wrong, or different to wait two to three to four minutes before they start to go negative, right? So we can really use analytics to be the tool, right, that, that shows that now. Jeremy Butnick, who's who used to be the uh, another head of customer support for Overstock, I forget where he's at now. Um, I'm sorry, sorry for 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 forgetting names and and things. Um, but he brought up a couple things with me talking about even like um, virtual callbacks. Like, do you offer them? Do you not offer them? Uh, do you offer them within three minutes, four minutes? Like, there's so many different things that we can do and that we we haven't even really thought about yet but the i guess the the bottom line is you can measure and 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 kind of look at different nuances of customer experience right and all that technology right do we how long can we wait um how long should we do messages for um try to really pinpoint and, and kind of use analytics to to see what is the extent that you can maybe make efficiency possible in your contact center without ticking off your customers, right? So people talk about the ROI on analytics. That's a huge piece of, of what I think is, is, is huge ROI on, on analytics. The, the seventh kind of piece that people really don't think about is, is tracking silence, right? Per agent. So if we know overall that we're seeing a lot of silence on the phone, we know that we probably have a training issue where there's some questions that are coming in that we have not prepared our associates for. So tracking silence, I think, is a huge issue, number one, uh, for the overall macro, but we can pinpoint it down to an agent as well, right? So we can also see that maybe an agent has having issues uh, answering questions, um, certain soft skills, right, to, to, to talk through as they're searching for things uh, might be lacking, Right. It's a huge indicator of some weakness in training or some weakness of an agent skill level that we've not done a really good job of, of giving them. So I think that's a really cool use case and things that we don't really think about as well. So, right. So whether it's it's putting people on hold or just now, and a lot of times we can't track mute, right? In your in your CX platform. You can track if somebody's on hold, but a lot of times we will mute their silence. Now we're tracking that number. 
in, in seeing if there's there's some again rumblings under the surface before things really start to happen. Another really cool, I think, uh, use case for it. Number eight, and and you know people go out and they spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on fraud protection when maybe they have an analytic platform and they haven't thought about how they can use that platform. We use our speech analytics for a lot of our clients for a ton of different fraud protections, right? So remember, we can track what people say. So if we find a pattern of when fraud or when people are trying to commit fraud, right, such as a customer calls into one of our financial services clients and, for example, says, hey, will you um, change my address and please send me a new card out, right? Now, a lot of times that is not a big deal, but it could be, right? So we have all these different scenarios, especially for, that we've that we've come across with financial services clients that we built in that you can do this with anything, right? And build in, in these, these scenarios. So these calls will automatically get flagged, right? So we just kind of put in there, right? Send a new card, change address, a ton of different variables for those. And then boom, that goes to our QA. We're going to make sure that we listen to that. We're going to watch that account, make sure everything is good, or we're not even going to do it. Things like that. If, if we've had other issues with, with, with that account in the past. Ton that you can do from a fraud protection standpoint on analytics that you don't have to go and, and spend a ton of money if you already have this tool. Uh, number nine, again, is, is I think tracking competitors is kind of interesting and fun. Um, if you have a list of your competitors, anytime that your customers talk about those competitors, we can you know, rank them positive or negative. I think that that's a really unique use case and, and cool use case, again, from the marketing standpoint that goes beyond just the products that you're doing, but looking at the macro marketing environment or sales environment that you may be, um, you know, looking at, um, in, in understanding how, do, how does your, your customer base view you compared to your to your uh, competitors, right? And maybe that's good, maybe that's bad. But again, even if it's bad, it gives you something to think about, something to work on. And then we can look at other keywords about why do, do they think the competitors are doing a better job, right? Just an unbelievable, awesome, awesome, awesome tool, All right? And then the next one is, and, and people don't really, I guess, get this totally, is, is you can use this on a ton of different channels, right? So Voice is the one we always think about, but email and chat are also things that can be really good because it's not subjective into what we're saying. It's actually written word, which makes the translation, you know, pretty darn easy or the transcription pretty darn easy. And I know I get a lot of this. Well, our emails have this heading and it ruins. You can take all that stuff out. Right. So like subject and, and all that kind of stuff, you can you can tell the platform, don't look at that. Just kind of look at the body, the meat of this. Um, and I think you can get some really good insights to that as well. So again, this list continues to grow for us. Um, we are trying to think, and, and we do some talking to our agents and customers all the time about, you know, what, what are some things that you, you'd want to see with this? Or what are some of the things that, that you have questions about? How can we make this thing better? How can we dig deeper? So I think it's a, it's a really awesome tool. And like anything, you know, we have all these tools. If you really utilize it and you you really put the time into make analytics a priority, it will become one of the, the most useful, drive the most efficiency, drive the most insights of anything in your contact center. So, again, I'm a huge fan. Um, I, I love that the ROI that we've been able to generate for our customers, you know, based on, on some of the analytic things that we've done in the past. Um, and, and it just keeps getting better and better. All right, guys, that's uh, that's what I got for you today. I hope that that is uh, helpful. I hope that that maybe generates some of your your brain a little bit to, to maybe think through. Right, we're, we're heading into fourth quarter. A lot of people are starting to make and think about what 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 purchases do I need for first quarter? You know, if if you are looking for some of the things we talked about here, I think you know analytics should be something definitely definitely on your uh, on your list. Thanks, guys. Love all you. Thank you so much. Love to see uh, a couple more reviews on, on iTunes. If, if any of you can, can throw that out to me, I, I would really appreciate it. And I will talk to all you guys next week.